In this video, I'm going to build a bath interferometer, which is a simple uh, common path interferometer that has shown a lot of popularity. I use a 10 millimeter beam splitting cube from Surplus Shed and a 10 millimeter focal length uh, plano convex lens. You can get those for under $22 from Surplus Shed. I got a 650 nanometer laser diode module from eBay for $2 and some change for the light source. And I cut a piece of first surface mirror for some stock I had laying in my junk drawer. Here's the layout for my bath interferometer. It's pretty simple. It uses a beam splitting cube and a plano convex lens and a little fold mirror. The lens is glued directly onto the beam splitter to uh, eliminate uh, two surfaces that might get dust. And it's a very convenient way to mount a lens. Light from the laser is split into two beams, a reference beam and a test beam. The test beam in blue goes straight through and comes to a focus and then diverges to fill out the aperture of the test mirror. The reference beam in green is reflected up, bounces off the fold mirror, and goes out as a collimated beam. On the return path, the test beam reflects off the fold mirror and comes to a focus just past the bottom side of the uh, beam splitting cube where it's combined with the reference beam coming back through the plano convex lens. There the uh, interferogram is viewed with a camera lens or your eye. Okay, um, here's my surplus shed uh, beam splitting prism. Uh, it's coated and I've got a 10, uh, 10 millimeter focal length, 7 millimeter diameter lens from surplus shed also. Um, if you know how to uh, polish the coatings off, uh, you can do that. I'm not going to recommend it because it's not easy to do, but um, uh, because you really shouldn't uh, glue together coated surfaces, but it'll give a little bit of reflectivity. So um, I've already polished the, the uh, coatings off of these. I'm going to, uh, this is the side that I've coated. I'm going to clean it with acetone. And the same with this little lens. Kind of hard to hold these little things. Then I'm going to take some uh, UV um, optical cement. This is some I had Loctite 349. I'll I don't even know if they still make it anymore, but you need the tiniest little drop. Yeah. And you need to be careful with air bubbles. And the lens I just cleaned. Probably would have been better if I had some tweezers. Need to be sure that you don't get any um, lint or anything trapped between them. I'll set that down and then press it straight down. That'll squeeze any bubbles that are in there out. And I'm gonna I'm gonna center that pretty much like that. Let's see I've actually got a little bit too much on there. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, I don't see any air bubbles trapped. Um, gonna get me a magnifier and check this out first. Okay, so I've checked this out. I don't see any lint or any bubbles in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cure it. Um, at work, we'd probably use a UV gun. You can also set set it in the sunlight, which will work, or you can. I've, I've got a little uh, UV LED here that I'm going to cure it with. Not sure how many minutes this will take. When I'm finished, I'll probably also set it out in the sunlight just to be sure I get it. Okay, so I got my lens glued on there. 
without any air bubbles. And um, next thing I want to do, I want to mount it. And I'm going to mount it on this little brass knurled nut. And um, so let's see, get the right orientation. I want, I want to have the, it doesn't really matter, but I want the re reflection to go this direction. Laser will come in this way, and the, refle the uh, one reflection will go off to the upper side here. So I'm going to glue it onto this post, also with this UV glue. Take some of that off and smear it around a little bit. And then set my prism on there. And then grab my UV and then cure it with my UV. Well, next we'll uh, need a fold mirror and I've got a little piece of leftover mirror here. Um, I think it came from Edmonds, uh, one millimeter thick. Um, height doesn't matter, but I'm I'm going to make mine about seven millimeters, and I put a couple marks on here. And we'll take a glass cutter and score the back side. The uh, the front side is um, got a protection uh, peel protection coating on it. Um, if you don't have that, uh, put a piece of tape tape on it, just for protection. <laughs> and then I'm going to score this. The glass cutter. And and break it. But the uh, peel peel uh, layer still on there, so we'll take a razor blade to separate it. Yeah. I got anyway when I'm I'm gonna leave that on there and when I'm finished uh, I'll peel that off just to help keep it clean. Okay so here's my beam splitter and lens mounted up. And the next thing you need to do is make a little bracket to hold uh, the mirror. And I used some 10,000 uh, stainless steel shim stock and cut me a little 90 degree bracket that I uh, attached my mirror. I stuck the mirror on with uh, 20,000 double sided tape. And then I'd also drill a little hole in the corner there as close as I could so that the whole uh, bracket and mirror will, can rotate so I can adjust my angle of the, of the mirror. You also want to check and make sure that the bracket is holding the mirror at a good 90 degrees against a, a good machinist square. And it is. If it's off you can bend it one way or the other which is nice about uh, using uh, shim stock. But you want to end up with a good 90 degree fit. Now I'm going to mount these on a piece of scrap aluminum channel that I got. I think this is an inch and a half wide. And uh, I've already pre-drilled a couple of holes here. Uh, first hole the, is going to mount the uh, beam splitter. Convenient way to mount it. Just screw that right down. And then Tighten that up. Um, and then I'm going to use, a, I drilled and tap a hole for a 440 screw that'll, that'll hold this mirror. And just take and mount my mirror on with. Allen wrench. I'm 
also have a little piece of tape it doesn't show but underneath my bracket a little piece of tape so that uh, you don't have metal to metal acts like a little washer so anyway there we have it and now I'll be able to change this and change the angle um, uh, when I uh, when it's in use and next thing I'll need to do I, I got this little laser diode module it's only like two dollars or something on eBay um, that's my light source and the next thing to do is going to mount that right here uh, behind the uh, beam splitter so here's my laser mounted um, I used hot melt glue to attach it to a piece of eighth by three quarter inch extruded aluminum. Uh, before I did that though, I took off the retaining ring in the front um, because you might accidentally uh, glue that on and, and, and the lens is focusable so you don't want to, to, uh, to do that. On the bottom, I drilled a, and tapped a hole for a 832 stud and super glued the threads on and uh, this will go in on my bath box yeah, like so and um, it's it'll be attached underneath with a with a um, neoprene washer you could use a spring I suppose and a, and a th another threaded uh, neural nut so that'll be attached on here on, on the inside I've, I've got another stud with a knurled nut that pushes up and that that'll allow me to tilt it adjust the tilt on it and the rotation will allow me to just uh, adjust it th this direction so I can line it up with the lens on the prism the height of the uh, the laser needs to be the same as the the lens and I came came up with a um, 92,000 shim that I stuck on here with um, double-sided tape the total height is 92 thousands so that's how I mounted the laser pretty simple so here's my finished bath interferometer um, I uh, have a two uh, tr AA uh, batteries hooked into the, the laser but I also added a, uh, a switch on the side a momentary switch and it's kind of hard to see a hundred ohm resistor across it and that what that does is cut down the the intensity of the, uh, the laser but also puts it in um, uh, non lasing mode. Let me show you that. The beam on the right is the test beam, and that comes to a focus about right there on the card. And then it expands out to fill the aperture of your test mirror. The, the beam on the left is the reference beam, and it stays as a collimated beam and doesn't change. If I push my button, it it uh, removes the resistor and it's in full laser mode. It's much much brighter, um, but um, it works better in the non-lasing mode. Tapped quarter twenty hole in the bottom for mounting, and I also uh, since I had put my switch in here, I decided to change change out the um, neural nut. I put a plastic uh, A32 cap screw in there and then with a hole in the bottom I can reach through and it's easier to adjust that way than trying to mess around with the all those wires so that's the completed interferometer and I think the next thing to do is to give it a try now he's got scandals by the number troubles by the score Every day my paycheck's less, each day for cost me more.